Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we've got a special one for you. This is a new tool uh, kit from Tamiya, the AMX 13 in 135th scale. Um, this tank uh, was a 50s, 60s um, French light tank designed after World War II. I think it's based on the, the 6T, um, this uh, or 12T, 12T? 60? I can't remember one of those two. Um, and this was the uh, the following uh, tank. Uh, we're kind of familiar with it right now because obviously TACOM uh, beat Tamiya to the punch by releasing a AMX 1375 and an AMX 90. This is basically the AMX 70, uh, 1375 with the 75 millimeter gun, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'm not sure what would be uh, what it would take to upgrade this to the 90. Obviously a different turret perhaps, and, and uh, considering the uh, the way it's uh, cast molded and so forth, um, and a barrel, but there are probably some other minor differences too that I'm not familiar with. So, uh, only having uh, played this briefly, or actually not even really played it, I've only worked up to the 6T myself, or is it 12T? I can't remember the, anyways, the, the, the one before this. Um, that said, not knowing any historical background, let's do a quick historical background on this tank, because I know you guys love these. <laughs> I always get rem remarks in the videos where I do these on, and, uh, and we'll come back and do the actual unboxing. The AMX-13 was designed at the Atelier de Construction Issa Le Molineux in 1946 to meet a requirement for an air-portable vehicle to support paratroopers. The first prototype was made in 1948, the compact chassis had torsion bar suspension with five road wheels and two return rollers. The engine runs the length of the tank on the right side, with the driver on the left. It features an uncommon two-part oscillating turret, where the gun is fixed to the turret and the entire upper turret changes elevation. The turret is set to the rear of the vehicle and holds the commander and gunner. The original 75mm gun was loaded by an automatic loading system fed by two six-round magazines located on either side of the automatic loader in the turret's bustle. The 12 rounds available in the drum magazines meant that the crew could engage targets quickly. However, once those rounds were expended, the vehicle had to retreat to cover and the crew had to reload shells from the outside of the vehicle. From 1966, the 75mm high velocity gun was replaced by a 90mm medium velocity gun, firing more effective heat ammunition, with the French upgrading all existing base models to this specification. By the early 1970s, export models were available with an even more potent 105mm gun. Although there are many variants on the turret, the basic chassis was almost unchanged until 1985, when changes including a new diesel engine, fully automatic transmission, and new hydropneumatic suspension were introduced. The AMX-13 was phased out of service with the French Army in the 1980s and production halted with the Model 1987. Alrighty, well I hope you enjoyed the uh, background information there, uh, courtesy of Wikipedia and, and fo photos I found off the internet. Uh, fair use, I hope, uh, in terms of uh, just information and so forth. Um, the uh, the release, this this uh, is important to point out, this is this is actually kind of a pre-release status model. You might be able to find this kit right now in Asia and Japan, but you won't see it in the United States for a little bit. It is probably on its way over on uh, ships and things in, in uh, you know, those, those, those big container thingies that go on ships. That's the way most of these bulk models are sent. That's why there's kind of a delay. Um, usually with uh, U.S. distributors getting them. But we appreciate uh, getting it uh, early on, but prior to our U.S. developer, our U.S. developer, U.S. distributor. I always think developer because I am a web developer after all. Um, anyways, this uh, kit says, uh, this is number kit number 349, which is probably what, 35349 three, 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 is the full st uh, stock number. Detailed static display model accurately captures AMX-13 form with oscillating turret and 75mm gun. Turret parts break down inspired by actual vehicle and offers hassle-free assembly. Features realistic depictions of surface textures on turret, canvas, cover, and cast metal areas. Comes with numerous accessories such as tools and jerry cans, commander torso figure, and two French army marking options. All right. Uh, on the side of the box, and I <coughs> apologize, my camera is a little bit too close to, to, to show you this, but uh, there is a, uh, a, a, a green uh, marking option here, uh, AS14 to me, a paint, and on the other side they do show, I don't think that'll, well, I guess it does kind of show up, it shows some of the 
the figure and model actually built models and figures on the top. You can see how small the tank is. I mean, look at the size of that figure. It, uh, I believe, is what, a two-man tank, I want to say? Uh, it might be three-man, I guess. Uh, I'm not really sure. Um, all right, so cracking the box open, as we, we do here on this channel. You can see uh, right off the bat, it's a nice uh, beige Tamiya color uh, plastic. We've got, uh, you can see immediately, a nice one-piece uh, slide molded uh, barrel there. Um, I guess that's probably slide molded, isn't it? It's in that little special area. I'm not sure. I think, I, I believe so. Yes, I'm going to say yes. Uh, <laughs> although usually slide molded parts are kind of off to the side. But otherwise, I'm, I'm trying to figure, well, I guess I guess you could do maybe a, a, a one-piece barrel without slide molding. I mean, that should be doable, right? I mean, obviously the the sprue parts. Why haven't they done these for years? Why did they always give us two parts? That, that does beg the question, what, you know, what, what was the reason for that? Other than to say, look, you have to glue it together and then sand down the seam and so forth. Of course, these have 2016 stamp dates on them, as I just checked to make sure. But let me go ahead and uh, take the plastic out and then we will uh, continue. Then you've got, um, this has two, two sprue uh, frets in it with road wheels and idler arms and sprocket wheels and so forth and little U-bolts uh, or U, U, U tow cable bolts no not bolts um, anyways those things that you, you hook on the, the tow cables to um, and uh, the very small and diminutive uh, hull here with again a uh, actually don't see a don't see a date on that one other than oh maybe I'm just going upside down I can't read it uh, the part number and 2016 yeah um, some nice uh, lower uh, surface detail here now I could compare this with the TACOM kit. I do still have the 1375 here, but you know, I'm, it's kind of fresh in my mind so I can kind of remember what some of these things look like. Obviously a lot of these parts look very similar. Uh, a little bit of detail here on the, the on the turret that I'm not remember seeing in the uh, TACOM release. And of course the, the, the one piece molded uh, uh, mantlet there or whatever you call that in terms of one piece uh, turret, I guess. Tracks are vinyl or whatever that technical Material is that everybody always wants to point out. It's not vinyl. It's uh, poly. What? What? Blah blah. blah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's still vinyl. <laughs> now, I appreciate that you're trying to be technical, but you know, the only we only need to know if they're plastic, resin, metal, or vinyl. Uh, and these we're going to call vinyl, even though they technically are some kind of plastic. But um, it's it's a, it's it's kind of like that respect for the old terms. You know what I mean? Um, it's you know. Uh, so yeah, these are, are per gonna be pretty easy to do. Um, no separate track links, although I'm sure there potentially would be aftermarket companies maybe providing them. We did see qu very, uh, uh, very intimately how the TACOM tracks went together, and uh, yeah, they were going to be a bit of a pain, I could tell, uh, mainly because they didn't didn't snap together. So you're going to have to like, you know, arrange them around and, and do you know all the the, the gluing of, of tracks and so forth according to the um, the way it goes on the the model itself. All right, so this final sprue, you can see a very, not very, we've got what, uh, hull, uh, turret, two sprues with row, row wheel, another sprue with body parts, uh, main hull, and then this one. So it's not a, you know, not a huge number of parts in this kit, but it's a very small tank, so not really that surprising. And I'm going to take these out, and I'm going to show you photos later on, so for people who aren't familiar with our review process, that's the way it works. All right, so um, you can see also that they did not go with the that, that um, again, plasticky, uh, rubbery material that Tacom used. They went with a plastic uh, canvas piece, which is probably going to limit traverse of the turret, uh, depending on your positioning and so forth. I would imagine. Although you know the other piece potentially might limit it as well. I don't. I don't know what the, the benefit there would have been. But um, again, you know, seeing some typical, excellent to me, a production quality here. Not seeing anything on the level of say super detailing. But then I sometimes only notice those things once I've taken the photos. So. Uh, well, let's go ahead and get these out of the bags and maybe I'll see more. All right, so final bits though, uh, a little bit of photo etch. You can see that piece there and some decals and again a very small sheet which is turned over. I can't, I can't show you. And then there's something else in there, I think. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. Uh, manual and per my new review style, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take a look at the manual first. And this is the reference sheet that Tamiya provides with all their kits now, which is in Chinese, Japanese, German, Italian, I think, and a couple other languages. Um, but basically, uh, actually, it may not be in Italian, so don't, don't quote me on that. Um, but it is in French, I believe, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, just reference number information and uh, some, some kind of reference photos there. And then we have the actual manual, which of course is going to have a 
which of course is good. What doesn't have a doesn't have a sprue overlay? What? I thought to me always had sprue overlays. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm thinking of Dragon and the other the other Chinese manufacturer. Okay, so uh, maybe I'm misspeaking there, but uh, it probably does need one with this kit. Uh, so we go right into uh, step one, which was the lower the lower hull and uh, suspension bits. Um, you can see that the uh, I think that's the front section, right? The front section goes on, and then of course the, all the little idler arms and things like that. Not idler arms. The uh, what do you call those things? Um, yeah, the L shape thingies. Um, and then of course uh, details going on the back here with. Uh, um, Toe, toe, toe connection point and all that stuff, toe wing connection point. And then some of the uh, road wheels going together, um, uh, tracks going on, uh, some of the upper hull uh, air vent. They Nice that they have built this air vent up a little bit so it actually has some depth to it. Um, upper hull going on lower hull, top uh, muffler and other bits going in there uh, you know more more detail more more stuff that we get into the turret construction um, they do have a two-piece uh, muzzle brake which was I think the same for the uh, TACOM kit I suppose if they had molded that onto the end definitely slide molded then because you'd have uh, that hollow piece through the middle there but uh, yeah they have uh, like this piece which I think was probably molded onto the TACOM kit I want to say but that that that's interesting that they've done that little bit uh, there and of course the uh, underside uh, canvas lots of detail there with the uh, commander visor now I'm not seeing any clear parts which I believe TACOM had so unless I'm just not seeing them it doesn't look like this one includes any lens material or anything for the uh, the clear parts and I'm not seeing that added here either am I nope so that's one potential deficiency modelers will probably go, oop, that was a mistake. Now you've now you've definitely opened it up for the aftermarket companies to provide that. Which I'm sure the aftermarket companies should be like, yes, we have something to provide. Tracks and, and well, actually, they probably could figure out a lot of things to provide. But anyways, that's what aftermarket companies do. And thank God they're there. Um, so yeah, there have been the, some painting and marking options here. French Army Unit Unknown. Uh, attaching Commander figure and they show some again Tamiya colors and then on the back French Army Unit Unknown France 1967 I don't think this thing was ever actually deployed in combat I may be wrong it may, may have been sold to countries who used it in combat afterwards but I'm not thinking that it saw anything like Vietnam or they probably I don't know it would have worked in Vietnam I, I suppose maybe if it was in hilly territories not the jungle and things like that but uh, that would have been interesting I, and again I, I I would imagine that, uh, and people who are military historians on, the, on this can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, maybe this was kind of a thinking that they needed a fast, light response tank and, and to the potential um, uh, Soviet bloc kind of response things. But uh, yeah, obviously the, the MBT uh, became the, the standard for tanks at some point during the 60s. So, all righty. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the plastic. Actually, let's look open this up first because I'm curious if there's anything else in here. Staples, traditional staples for the. Uh... All right, so that really is just a protector for that little bit of photo etch, and then the decal sheet, which is very small, and uh... there'll be a photo of that too, obviously, in the photo section of the video, which will be further on. All right, so let's take a look at this. Lore. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look at the hull in the. I should just open everything and have it out, and then I don't have to even. That would actually make me more productive in my time if I opened everything. Like I did a break, and then I could just cut that bit out where I opened everything, and then, and then looked at everything. What do you guys think about that? Would that would that work better? You're probably like, yeah, because we're getting so tired of you opening. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, there's some nice detail here. With uh, you can see that those these little round uh, access ports or something there. Um, I'm not going to do it for every part, but hold on, just wait just a second. I'm just going to compare the hulls and see if we have any scale differences. And yeah, it looks like we do have a little, like a couple of millimeters at least. Um, wow, that's a, yeah, that's a huge difference. So you can see, uh, let me put these in more this way. 
<laughs> somebody's gonna have a field day with this now I think some of this part is not shown on here like they've done it differently but just trying to line these up uh, yeah there's a definite size difference here it's again not huge I don't know if you can see that too well um, I'm trying to get the angle right but there's you know there's like three or four millimeters difference here now now there are parts that go over this so potentially they Tacom's molded it in here so maybe 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 they're not you know maybe it's not that pronounced but some of these parts are definitely different um, kind of doing a mirror effect here but you know like the positions of those um, I'm trying to line it up so that it should be right but those positions on the even where that the the uh, axles whatever the the road wheels connection points are going in are obviously different um, you can see more that way probably but and I've moved it off but anyway so, so you know there's gonna be there's definitely gonna be a field day for Terry Terry Ashley Terry's like yes I'm gonna have something to like compare where I can do all my little photos and he does such a great job with those too uh, but yeah so one of these is gonna come out the winner like isn't that sad though that one has to be the winner and one has to be the loser I mean they both are different kids they're different people worked on them it's like saying we want you to write a book about World War II, and we want those books to come out looking exactly the same. Now, I know that's not a fair comparison, but but it's like, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Nobody's going to make two two kids of something and then have it be exactly the same or be exactly correct. Like, stop thinking that it's going to just be perfect. Now, these look pretty close to being the same. Now, that, that, that thing, definitely, though, that's on the Tamiya kit is not here unless it's on the Tacom kit, and I'm not remembering that you, that you attached it over there, but... But that's something that maybe had been on, maybe was on the reference version, that wasn't on one on one of them that wasn't on the other one. Um, so obviously the to make it gives you access these these as openable uh, little uh, areas. Uh, they also show like a little ridge around the tack on one. And there's there's a really heavy weld line here, and there's a really light weld line on the to make it. So things like that again, it's going to be down to those experts. I'm not going to call it, but yeah. And I, you know, I, I can see subtle differences with a lot of these. Uh, but yeah, that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to do any more than that. You're lucky I got that. Uh, and probably either to me or attack, I'm going, why did you have to compare the kits? We don't like comparisons. But manufacturers do not like comparisons, as Terry will, will probably attest to. But, um, but I think it's fair. These two kits coming out almost at identical time periods, you know, you guys out there need information. Which one's the better kit? To, I don't know which one to buy. Well, you know, there's gonna the information is gonna be out there. I'm not gonna be the one to compare them because again, I'm not an expert on this tank and and I don't have the reference materials to to say oh I have photos of this and that and so forth. So I'll leave it up to the guys that do to do that kind of thing. I'll just wanted to point out that yeah, they're gonna be differences. Um, so steel row wheels look nice or the the, the sprocket wheel and then this, this is the either wheel, right, guys? I. I I don't know all these technical terms for tanks and stuff. I've only been dealing with it for 16 years now. Actually, more than that if you count all the time I was doing these models before that. So 30-something, 40, 40 years practically. Uh, <laughs> anyways, all right. So, um, yeah, lots of small detail parts, little hand grab things. You know, I don't want to spend too much time looking at the plastic because probably the photos are going to kind of show more on this than... Then I can see even with my naked eye without reading glasses on or without my optivisors on, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I see some nice texturing here on this, this hatch cover, which again, you're not going to see with this camera because I probably can't hold the thing steady enough to actually get it to full focus on that. Um, shovel pickaxe nice small tool details here uh, spare tracks and the other hatch area there also the commander's hatch so very nice very nice yeah I, I, just as a side note while I'm opening this I was just thinking about the guy who recently very you know trying to be helpful I get it Hold these things still. I can't see them. You know, da, 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 da. yeah, I get it. I understand. But you know, I have been doing these for ten years. My video, my first video on YouTube went up in two thousand six. That's practically when YouTube was brand new. 
<laughs> um, so yeah, I've been doing this longer than practically everybody else on YouTube. I mean, I, somebody step up. If you've been doing, if you have a video older than 2006, put up your hand and say, "Yep, no, I was doing it before that." And I'll, I'll be like, "Nope, that person's definitely got earlier than me." But the, I guess the, 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 um, the, uh, the reason I bring that up is because, yeah, I, I will probably change, but you know, my change, my changes are going to be subtle and not dramatic in terms of the way I'm doing these. Because again, I need to do them in a way that doesn't take nine hours to make a video, which some of these guys do produce videos and that's, it takes them a whole day, like solid. I'm not saying they do it all in one shot, but they, it takes them like a long time to edit these videos or do, or do the projects, you know, take even longer weeks even to actually do the project videos that they show you with where they build the tank. So definitely seeing some nice stuff here in terms of the, the figure detail. And, and uh, I like these, I like these arms and stuff because again, these look like to me the small guys. They would have, in other words, I'm not seeing a really big, beefy arm of a 135th scale guy who's like would be a typical arm you'd see on, you know, like a to scale for a soldier or something. These were tankers of a light tank, very small interior compartments. They didn't put big guys in these tanks. They put little guys in these tanks. So it makes sense that the figure affects a little guy. And those are the kind of details, by the way. That's the kind of attention to detail you're going to see with a Tamiya kit that potentially with some of the other, you know, uh, larger manufacturers would miss that and and just put like, oh yeah, we've got that guy we used in a previous one. You push, you know, throw that guy in there, even though it's a different, totally different tank. Um, again, seeing some nice uh, surface detail on this top hull piece. Uh, the rear hatches are not visible or do they did not opt to do like a, a photo etch for those. I believe that was the same on the TACOM kit. Same thing with these front vents. Um, I believe this is very similar though in terms of the way it's set up. So uh, yeah, let's um, pretty much already showed off the, the vinyl, but you know, they've got uh, two connection points here to, to put these together. Looks like it works fairly well. And uh, we'll show those off in the photos. Let's show those photos and then come back and conclude.
All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the photos on the new Tamiya AMX 13 French light tank. Uh, this kit, like I said, should be available. This is March 12th or so. You probably see this kit start showing up around early April, I would imagine, or as late as it late April if, if, it, uh, if it, they've got it to me really early. So uh, thanks, our thanks to our uh, friends at Tamiya, Tamiya, Tamiya USA. I almost thought I was saying the wrong thing there, but yes, Tamiya USA, who provided the uh, the kit for us to take a look at. We will be, of course, sending this over to uh, a, a reviewer for a full uh, potentially inbox review or definitely a build review slash build project. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Or if you're interested, please um, let us know of your interest for this kit or any of our other kits, which you can find links on the homepage for uh, available samples and uh, how to submit a review and all that good stuff. So um, if you liked this review and you want to see more like this, please don't forget to uh, leave us a comment or feedback and make sure to click that like button on YouTube or on uh, our website. And we will see you next time uh, on Cracking the Box.